Citizens of the realm, Mana Lords has released, well, into early access at least. And today we have an early look at Mana Lords, which is probably one of the most anticipated strategy games of 2024. And today we're going to see what it is going to be like when you jump into it. And there's a lot to see. So if you have any questions about the game, just ask down below and I should be able to check it out for you and get back to you about an answer. Anyway, when you go into a new game, there is this sort of character creation. You can name yourself, you can select a bunch of portraits, you can create your own kind of uh, coat of arms here. Or you can now actually load a custom texture so I can have my own little logo just placed right there. But you know, jumping into a brand new game can have a bit of a slow start, so let me jump uh, ahead a little bit to leveling up our village for the first time. All right, here we are loading into our quaint little village. Now, this might seem like a very small start and beginning, but you know, this is this is pretty much there we go. We just leveled up because the first uh, the first uh, level up is when you get 5 burgage bur burgage plots, basically 5 houses which uh um which uh, have been completely built. And you can see that this is tutorialized and there is sort of a description of what's going on. Now, the main thing here in this version, compared to the demo from last year, is that military is now going to be here. A strong militia is paramount to the survival of any settlement. And we just got some weapons to form a militia. But also, just so you know, this is running on maximum graphics. Now, I have a pretty good setup, but I have to say that this is still very much optimized. One of my biggest praises of Mana Lords in the past, in the demo, was its optimization. And you can see that it looks really good, and you can zoom all the way in, and it's almost seamless. I, I always say, you, in this game, you can see every blade of grass, and yet when you zoom out, it just fades seamlessly. Now, there's 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 a special blending trick going on here. So, like, I'm trying to find where the grass actually fades in. There, you can see you can see right there. I'm not sure if you can see it on on YouTube, but you can see there's grass wobbling there. So the grass does exist here, but then you zoom out, and then I think I think the grass is gone there, and it looks exactly the same. This this is some optimization magic where it's like it, you see all the details zoomed in and then it, it's just gone. And it's the same for the forest as well. Look at this. We get right down into the forest and look, it's, it's a nice looking forest. <laughs> look at all this detail. And you just zoom right out and it's buttery smooth. I'm getting solid 60 frames as far as I can tell. Anyway. Uh, besides that, we do probably want to try form that militia so we can create new units. This is all new. There are also mercenaries to hire, which uh, I have no money, so I'm not going to do that. But we just got a shipment of spears and uh, yeah, we got 10 recruits and large shields. So according to this for the militia, there's footmen, there's spear militia, there's polearm militia, and there's archer militia. So there are polearms. And there are, uh, you can see the, the weapons here, there's war bows and I think there's a crossbow, small shields, sidearms. So let's just go ahead and create a spear militia. Ah, I've created my first militia unit. Uh, they'll try, they'll get the equipment and basically the weapons will be stored in the houses. Uh, and once they get all the equipment home, we can then rally our units. So... The weapons have shown up into... Uh, it should have shown up and been added to our storehouse, yes. So the people living in these houses, they will want to go and grab those weapons and bring it back. And that sort of is kind of like how Zeus, Master of Olympus, handles military, where the, the people who live in your village or town, the people who live in your city, are the, the soldiers that come out. But of course, this is the militia, not a formal military. Now, besides that, we have leveled up. This is the new tech tree. Now, there are policies to enact as well. And, uh, ooh, a mysterious empty production page. But this is the development thing. So we leveled up. So we actually got one development point. Now, I do want to go over this because there's a lot to see. Um, up, uh, I don't know if these sections are actually 
officially called anything, but this looks like agriculture. This looks like trade. This looks like uh, smithing and military. And this looks like um, uh, produced goods, I guess. You know, trapping, forest management, beekeeping, advanced beekeeping. So some this is still early access. So, so some of these are still work in progress. Advanced skinning is there. Under agriculture, we've got orchardry, sheep breeding, and heavy plow. Note when you plant orchard trees, they produce very little until three years later. You know, but this is rye cultivation, irrigation, fertilization, bakeries is up there. On the trade side, there's foreign suppliers and trade logistics, and you can get better deals. Down here is the military side, where you can do basic armor making or charcoal burning and deep mining. So I'm not too sure what particularly is really good here. So it really depends on your setup. So doubles the capacity of all berry deposits is a very good one if you were near berries. Now, I set up my village there, and my berries is over there. So this is not quite <laughs> what uh, I want to get right now. Also, just a nice point here on the wild animals. When you're hunting for wild animals, so let me go to construction, and then I want to hunting camp. You see there's this red circle. This is where the the animals actually live they live in this red circle if you cut down trees until that red circle or if you build within that red circle the animals will actually migrate they will leave to somewhere else so what i actually want to do here is you can set work areas so unlimited work areas i want to limit the work area and i want to uh nope i misclicked I want to go to advanced. I want to limit the work area to here. Uh, I can control middle mouse to adjust the size. And I want them to chop down the trees. Uh, like here, right? I want the work area to be there so they don't cut towards where the wild animals are. Because I don't want them running any further away. Now, besides that, we've got a number of things that we have to deal with. Our fuel supply is low. It's not winter, it's spring. You can see down here, there's the whole season system. Spring, summer, autumn, winter. Consumption doubled and lack of firewood might cause freezing uh, during winter. So that's going to be important. Oh, it's starting to rain. There are weather effects. And I did turn on a cosmetic day-night cycle. I love day-night cycles, but you can turn that off when that happens. Uh, so first thing, I want to go and set up... So what I have here is a logging camp, but I need to get a woodcutter's lodge. So let me just go ahead and set one of these up. I don't know, I guess right here. The paths that form are sort of natural paths. I'm going to get go ahead and build one of those. I do also want to try and increase our approval. Uh, we were homeless for a while, so that's bringing down our morale. But I can preemptively sort of... How do I... Can I build this road out a bit and then I want to maybe extend a road out uh, this way. And then... I don't know why I'm building straight roads. They don't have to be straight. They can curve. Uh, I can connect this. This. Yeah, just have some proper road. No, no, not there. And I can connect a proper road up to here. Yeah, so we're just building those proper roads. You can see the roads, again, it just sort of naturally fades into a road. It's not like you're just plopping things down. <laughs> but I extended that road because I wanted to prep uh, more, a couple more houses. So this is how plots work. You can build these sort of flexible plots and then... You can do that, and then you can just say, okay, I want two houses there. Now, if they get, like, enough space, they can actually have room for add-ons and stuff. But things are very flexible like that. You just set those plots down. This is all building around our market, which has a food stall and firewood stall. Firewood, which we'll be dealing with soon. The next level up for our village will be to increase... There we go. We need... Uh, Burgage plots level two or higher, at least two of them. But to do that, we need, I think, a church and clothing stall supply. And 
Church is something that we could get to. A church just requires 20 planks, which we can do this. We can get this. We have 10 stone right now. We just need to get planks down. But clothing supply, that's something else. I think that is something we may have to import. Um, but having said that, if I check our army... Um, so we can actually rally here, I think. And then... Okay, bit of a lag there, but that's okay. Oh, moving your units. Okay, it is tutorializing this. You can select your units with the left mouse button, uh, command them with the right mouse button, hold and drag a line, hold Alt while dragging to keep the formation when multiple units are commanded. Got it. So this is our military. The combat strength of units depend on many factors. Stances, morale, fatigue, effectiveness. Uh-huh. We can hold tab to inspect all the details. So this, look at this, military in Manor Lords. This was not a thing. So we can draw lines and formations. Get into a line formation there. Very nice. Balanced. We can stand your ground. Oh, there's a stand ground button. Miss alert. Ooh, stance miss alert. Give ground. Very nice. Hold. They're doing a thing. Yep, getting into a... Stand your ground. Yeah, balanced is fine. Ah, oh, this, this is this is nice. Look, we can get them into a nice little column formation if we want them to do that. So this is full-on proper RTS control, right? This, this is RTS, RTS. Now disband the unit. Everyone go back to work because we're not actually working properly. <laughs> yeah, everyone just, just head on back. Go on, back to work. Do your things. There's, there's houses to build. <laughs> okay, so military works in this game. That's nice to see. Now, I was talking a lot about the graphics and all of that. So I think this is a good opportunity to bring up the options menu. In the settings menu, this is something that a lot of people are going to be wanting to know. Auto save frequency is on. There's options for that. Tutorial pop-ups. You can disable all the tutorials if you don't want them. There's the cosmetic day-night cycles. What happens when an enemy is spotted? You can slow down. You can pause. Do nothing. Graphics, this is all pretty much, this, this was the default options really, and it's, uh, yeah, it's it's pretty good. Sharpening, I set it up to medium, some people won't want that. Um, there's various anti-aliasing styles, yeah, so this is all there. Audio sliders, there's pretty much one for everything. I can't, I haven't found something that needs a separate audio slider so far so i'm very happy with the separate audio sliders uh, controls are here lock cursor constrain mouse cursor is an option edge panning is an option speeds are options camera shake can be disabled keys can be rebound for all of this stuff cinematic mode control c gonna check that out language and accessibility there is a ui scale so let's max it <laughs> okay let's not max it let's minimize it okay yeah one one i think is pretty pretty good but if you need it bigger it can be bigger let's continue back into the game uh cinematic mode getting rid of the ui i like how the ambient sounds get louder as you get closer to the ground because that's when you want like the cinematic effect and then it gets quieter when you go further away because that's when you want the the more gameplay, but also this is a nice looking world. Okay, let's get back to the game. So things are going pretty well so far for our burgeoning town. We've got a storehouse here, we've got a granary here. Uh, we were building this woodcutter's lodge, which I'm going to prioritize to very high because we need that before we build these houses. In terms of resources, here's a nice toggle, currently showing surplus goods. So what that means is when you build a structure um, and it, it's starting to use a timber, it will not show the timber here. See, it says nine timber. If I set it to all, you'll see 14 timber. Oh, this is total goods, 14 timber. But no, we actually have nine because five are going to be used by this. One here, two here, two there. So that's five timber. Okay, auto save, very nice. And so that's just a nice little thing. Now this development point, I'm gonna save because I don't really know 
Ooh, enables hunters to skillfully lay traps in the forest, which gives a passive income. That's actually something we could use now. Which I think is something... Sheep grazing on the pastures. Sheep would be nice to have, but I think you have to import sheep. Uh, establishing a new trade route always costs a maximum of 25 regional wealth. Foreign suppliers, no. You know, I think we can actually use trapping right now. So let's go ahead and do that. Very good. And I assume... Uh, that means we can, like, trapping will take place, right? As far as I understand. Okay. But right now, the priority is to fix our approval rating. And right now, we need to get it above 50%. And to do that, we need to do things that make people happy. So building a church is probably something that we can work towards. So to do that, we need to go to gathering, a saw pit. Now, can I fit it here? I can fit it here. Do I want it there? Or do I want it back here? You know what? I think, uh, I think right here next to our storehouse makes sense. So let's, uh, across from the storehouse, even closer. We're going to do that. And this is going to be priority high, priority high. So we solve our uh, woodcutter's lodge first. And then we can start producing sawmills. And then, we once we have that, we should be able to go to residential. If we get 20 planks, we could build a wooden church. And that should make people happy. Okay, but besides that... I probably want to work towards uh, trade. So what does this require? Trading post requires four logs. Yeah, sure. Oh, it's it's big. It's, it's got a big arrow here. Okay, but I guess uh, yeah, it makes sense to be here. Yeah, let's let's just do that. So this will be priority medium, and then the houses we actually... How do I want this? So we have market food variety, okay. So I think we want to get this on low. Yeah, so we get the houses first. Because if we want more people to move in, we're gonna need surplus housing. Okay, so this seems good. We can now speed up the game a little bit. Oh, also, there are these... Oh, not Zoom back in, sorry. Zoom back in. There are these overlays. So you can see underground water, emmer fertility, flax fertility, barley fertility, rye fertility. I've built my village exactly on where it's fertile to rye. This is not good. Okay, this, over here is pretty good as well. Uh... Emmer and rye, basically. We can't really grow flax in this region or barley. It both kind of sucks. Um, smell, work in progress. Fire hazard, work in progress. Okay, no, we don't need to know those things. No overlay. That's fine. Oh, and you can see now the rain has ended. It is nighttime. This is a cosmetic change. You can see the stars have come out, which is a nice touch. I just personally love day-night cycles but you can disable this if you want it to be on daytime all the time but I did want to just show that there is a day-night cycle and as you know your town and village gets bigger and there's more sources of light it'll probably look a lot nicer with the various fire sources and while we're doing this there is this which, this was in the demo, but you can actually just walk around your village. And see things really properly up close. Which is such a nice touch. This is so unnecessary. <laughs> this is so unnecessary. But I love that it's in the game. Ah. Oh, a village at night. And again, how, how detailed are these flowers? Are these actually 3D models? These are actually 3D models. These flowers are not... They're not like billboards or sprites. They're actually 3D models. Look at that. Obviously at this, this zoom level, it looks a little bit blurry. <laughs> but this, this is... Yeah, it's just... Okay, very nice. Let's get back out of that. 
Now, I know this might be a bit too dark for you, so I'm gonna go to the options into gameplay and turn off the cosmetic day-night cycle so that it's just daytime the whole time because YouTube videos can be dark and so I want to make sure you all can see what's actually happening but I did want to show that off because I personally do really like that okay so the woodcutter's lodge is down we're gonna need to put someone in there now the problem at the start when we're so short on families you what you do is you assign families to work in places so we currently don't have a lot of spare people to just work at things our approval rating ooh, market food variety plus three how's it plus three just bread and meat oh bread and meat's great yeah plus three for me <laughs> um i don't know if our hunting party is utilizing their new thing trapping 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 oh they are using that new thing Wife, husband, son. Are they all trapping? The son as well? Where's the son? What are you doing? Are you actually trapping? Who is this? This is Thomas. Thomas, what are you doing? Are you actually setting traps? Like, what? How, how detailed is this simulation? Like, visually. So we know that the people are trapping. Nice footsteps. Very good. Like, how far are you going out? Where are you going to... Oh, you're... Where are you going to? They've walked really far. Um, we can actually see where they are. Whoa, what are you doing all the way out here? I mean, the wild animals are there. Do they just have to... Okay, we, we can see there's someone here. What are, what are you doing? So this is... The wife is now fetching water. I assume they have actually... At least, she's probably set traps. Okay, well, the hunters are, are going very long distances to hunt things. Hopefully that doesn't affect our food supply too much. Um, that could be a bit of a problem. Uh, but besides that, our fuel supply is going up. So that's, that's going to be good. Now, the saw pit has been constructed. And this burgage plot is going as well. So I'm now going to disable the working of the storehouse so that I can get the saw pit going. So that we can actually get some planks. Okay, so this spare house is coming on in. Can I see the details of this? Like what's causing the minus two from the homelessness? Is it just because we don't have enough spare housing? Maybe that's the problem. So we, we probably do need to build these up here. So let's keep the game running. Firewood stall. Still got some stock. Okay, food stall. So this, this market area, it just auto-builds stalls based on what the families in this village are doing. Some birds flew over there. And you can see this this ox is the one that brings the resources around. People can't just carry trees around, okay? This ox has to do it. Okay. Oh, a new mercenary company is available. Very nice. Uh, not that we can afford it. If I check the mercenaries, we could hire local thugs for 15 treasury. I think we have zero treasury right now. Yeah, our treasury is zero. We got to do some taxes and stuff for that. Okay, so... We've got an extra house. Uh, we're going to get this house done as well. So we just have a couple spare houses there. And now we can get to building this trading post. Meanwhile, this saw pit, are you... Are you constructing? Are, are you doing things? Log storage. Does the ox need to bring the log to the saw pit? That might be... Ooh, construction reserve, right. Reserve will now be used for crafting. So let's make sure we always have like a stock of like five logs. Because right now we have 14? Yeah, we have 14 surplus. So we do have enough logs. Firewood, stone, tools, hides. Yeah, logs are not kept in the storehouse. How much does this need? Four logs? So I think 
I think the ox has to finish delivering the logs to the trading post first. And then we might be able to get the saw pit going. Food for eight months, yeah. That's going okay. So we do have hides. So, wait, according to this, clothing supply stall. We need linen, leather, or yarn. So we do have... We do have hides. Ah, okay, so we've built a trading post. Permanent livestock assignments, yeah, trade. Okay, so there's a whole trade system in this. We can establish a trade route, so minor trades, major trades, roof tiles, blocks, planks, stone. Okay. So I probably don't want to set these up. Oh, that's oh, that's just on the construction. There's also uh, crops, food, materials, commodities, and military. This UI is a little bit different from the the demo. Order a new horse. Wow. Okay. So I'm not gonna. I just wanted to have that so I could see what's going on. Okay. Log storage is in the saw pit. We're gonna start producing planks soon. Uh, besides that, we need to try and get, yeah, food variety. Oh, I see. Some food's not being distributed enough to some of these houses. You guys don't have food, which is a bit of a problem. All right, uh, but how do we produce um, leather? So if I go to construction... Uh, would it be so hunting camp apiary forager hut charcoal kiln stone cutter mining camp granary storehouse pack station hitching post marketplace fire cart food cart tavern church farming field farmhouse pasture windmill communal oven Industry, bloomery, smithy, clay furnace, malt house, tannery, tannery, produces leather. So if I start to produce um, clothes, so wait, the leather is stored in the storehouse? Or the hides, rather, are stored in the storehouse, yes. So I actually want a tannery, which... Um, I guess I'll just stick it back here. I don't know if people can... walk around properly here, but I'm gonna build this tannery here. Because if that's my understanding, then we should be able to get clothing from that, and then we just need the church. And then we'll be able to level up to the next level, I think. I think that's how that works. Okay, so in terms of the food, food stall. Are people getting food? Oh, I just need more people to do things. We just don't have enough people to do things. I really need... Disconnected from the major trades, connect the building to the King's Road, otherwise it won't attract any traveling merchants. Right. It means this is not actually connected to the King's Road, which I guess we'll need to connect up to here. I think that's the King's Road. Okay. So, some of our storage is... Yeah, we've got some planks coming in. So, if I check here... We've got five planks. All right, good. So, what I want to do is... I want to set this as priority high. And then, construction. The next thing we would want would be... Residential. And a wooden church. Now, this is probably going to be a big, important building. Not enough goods. Yeah, so we need trees uprooted for construction. I mean, it'd be really cool to have the church right here, right? Can I place this even though I don't have the resources yet? 
No, I actually have to have the resources first. All right, so we'll we'll slowly work on getting the planks. They are coming in. Now, in terms of... I suppose I could remove from the woodcutter's lodge and then we could do some storehouse management here. Like, getting things around is a little tricky because when you're short on people... Okay, we do have 50% approval. We, we need to maintain above 50% approval to attract people to join our village. So it's a bit hard to, to maintain it. Then again, children are also being born. I don't know how long they take low population growth, neutral approval. Yeah, that makes sense. Ooh, level 2 families, level 3 families. Level 3 families look kind of sus. <laughs> Why are they blue? <laughs> okay, but never mind. Uh, the tannery is being constructed. That will also allow us to have um, a clothing store. We just need to evolve two houses, so we don't actually need to have them all evolved. Is anyone living here? No, there's no one living here. These two houses are free. They're available. I still don't know why we have minus two homelessness. I don't think we have any homelessness. Is there anywhere to see why we have... Minus two from homelessness. It says previous. Controls of world population as well as morale of militia rallied from this settlement. Yeah, okay. I don't know why we have minus two homelessness. Something might be... Maybe it's just a residual. Because we have seven living spaces. And only five families. So yeah, we do have extra houses. Come on, just someone, come join us, anyone. We've connected to the King's Road. Just come on down. <laughs> Maybe. Uh. Some firewood stored there. Bit of meat coming in there, okay. Uh, the wild animals, oh, they are. So this does, there is a limited supply, but it does seem like they replenish. Oh, by the way, when it says wild animals, it's not just a stat. If you zoom in, you should actually be able to see. Yeah, see this deer right here. This is one of the best things about Mana Lords. It's that things are visually represented, right? This, this deer aren't just anywhere. Like if you zoom into like here, you're not going to find deer. There's no deer here. So you can't hear any footsteps because there's no deer. And see how easy it is to just zoom in and out through all of this stuff. Now, we need one more log for this. How many planks do we have? We've got 10 planks? Okay. Once I get 20 planks, I can actually just... Maybe I can speed that up if I do this. Oh, there's no real log storage there either, though. So that's fine. I don't really have anything. Do I have things to sell? Like, if I assign a family to the trading post... So this is minor trades. Import, export, full trade. Import, export, full trade. So I could, for example, export price, import price. Two is the export price? Jeez. Okay, well, we got the tannery down. You know what? If I get people clothes, they'll probably be happy. Look, we got 52. Market food variety plus four? Ooh. Is it because everyone suddenly got... Oh, almost. Oh, I, th I think just having houses much closer to the food store, because these two just have better access than these two. All right, so now we have 52% approval. And if I get them clothes, that should make them happier, right? There we go, we're producing clothes. Can we actually see all of the... the industries working? I can I actually just see them working? Let's let's go properly and, and meet the tanners. Where where are they? Where am I? I'm by the well. Why is it so hard to navigate on foot? There, there's the tanners. Let's go meet the tanners. 
Are they... Now, I don't know much about tanning hides, but I assume this is correct. Careful with that beam there. Careful with that beam there? Oh, is someone is sawing a, a log nearby. Look, this is someone who's produ producing a plank. Hey, you just produced a plank. Very nice. Splendid work on the roof, good sir. Splendid work on the roof, good sir. <laughs> what are these voice lines? Ah, <laughs> oh, yes, I am a peasant. <laughs> oh. Oh, okay. I thought it was lagging. No, it's auto-saving. So, as far as I can tell, all the industries are actually visually represented. Like, they do go out and, and do things. Like, you, you're... You've got a deer? Very nice. you got a deer. And then you hang it up, and it does actually hang up there. Then you butcher the deer. Okay. Now, you all have to tell me whether the butchering technique is good or bad here. I... <laughs> <laughs> but I think that that's as best of a simulation as we're gonna get. I mean, this is all very unnecessary already. Where are you going with that hammer? Just carrying a hammer? Oh, the tanner is back at it. Look at that. Soon we'll have clothes. Fantastic. Okay, let's zoom back out. So, the tannery is working. I just like being at this angle. The tannery is working. Have we actually produced... We've produced some leather. So that should mean a leather stall... Clothing stall! There we go! We've got a clothing stall set up. The tanners open up their own stall and I think... Hunter, peddling. Yeah, they, they come here and peddle their wares. So currently we have an unassigned worker. Do we need to build anything else? Maybe it's just... Um, wait, how many planks do we have? We got 20 planks. Okay, so if I go to construction, wooden church, I can now begin construction of the wooden church. Uh, yeah, here. We gained a family. A new family started moving in. <gasps> we have another family. Oh, okay, that's really good. So that means we can just keep things going, really. Um, what do I need working? Uh, like, it'd be nice to keep the, the granary and storehouse running. Let's, let's assign someone to... Uh, this family owns a market stall. If you unassign them, the market will have to be taken over by someone else. If you unassign them... Which... Should be fine, right? Oh, homelessness is now down to minus one. Oh, okay, so there's, like, there's a, a legacy thing. So the homelessness used to be minus two. And I think it's because we've gone to, like, the next, like, another season or something. So there's, like, a memory of how good or bad things were. So there's now a memory of plus two market food variety, which is very good. And homelessness went from minus two to minus one. So that means now we're floating above 50% um, happiness. So hopefully we get another family in soon. Uh, besides that, I'm going to increase the priority of the wooden church to very high. And I can plan more housing if I... Hmm, how do I want to do this? Maybe if I extend this road out this way, down the side of the church. I can then plan... A couple more... Housing slots, uh, I guess like this. Yeah, it's not exactly straight, but hey, it's the Middle Ages, sure. So I'll plan two more houses there. This intersection is going to have the church, the market. This this is the center of town right here, this T-junction. Okay. So the church is on the way. Uh, I s assume... Yeah, it now says zero stone, five planks. Okay, so we, we do have a surplus of planks, but it would be nice to probably secure some stone. There is an iron deposit there. 
a stone deposit there. It's quite far if we want to set things up. Now, there are some remnant buildings as well. There's a destroyed windmill and a destroyed granary. We could rebuild these, reconstruct the demolished buildings, but it's quite far from where we started. You know, thinking about it, I probably shouldn't have started up there. I probably should have started, like, here at this intersection in the King's Road. It'd be closer to the berries, closer to the clay and stone and that farmland. This sort of starting location I've picked is, like, not great, but sure. We don't have any woodcutters, right? So, what did I assign? The storehouse? Yeah, sure. Um, do people have clothes? Yes, people have clothes. So, they just need church access and the housing will evolve. Perfect. Yeah, this house is just too far, I think. We might need, like, some proper food markets and stuff. So we've just cleared the land for the church and I assume the ox cart is gonna have to start bringing things over. Where is the ox cart? If I go to the hitching post, uh, livestock, where are you? You're gathering. Oh, there we go. Yep, bringing in logs from where we've cut them down. It's tiresome work. We should probably speed up the game. <laughs> Living space. Plus two. Oh, the plus two is how many others are coming in, right? So... So we now have a legacy plus two market food variety. Plus two right now as well. So people were happy in the past and they're happy now. Ooh, clothing marked spy plus one. Very nice. So giving people new clothes plus one. Resource stolen by nearby bandits? Three of my leather. What? Nearby bandits? This is an adjacent territory. Brigands own it. What's this area? Eichenhau. There's bandits next door. Not to mention the other factions where there's Hildebolt von Berenut and... Oh, just outlaws. Hildebolt owns two. I need some claim with king's favor or with influence. Okay. So, these bandits next door. I don't think we can take them on with our militia. Look, they're surprisingly close. They're just on the other side of this forest. Oh, no. We're just going to be plagued by brigands. Okay, well, at least happiness is going up. We are producing enough leather to keep everyone clothed. Okay, a bunch of transported goods have shown up. The ox only needs to bring the uh, the logs. I think everything else can be brought by hand, I'm assuming. Yeah, we do have someone working the storehouse as well, which I think speeds things along. Okay, so things are going all right. Uh, I am a little concerned. Okay, we do have like eight Step months of food supply, so we should be able to survive through any kind of winter or anything like that. Hunting camp. Yeah, there's like nine meat in there. Carcass, transitionary resource. Okay. Unlimited work area. I guess that makes sense. They, they're, they're doing a good job, so I don't want to mess with them. The logging, I just don't want them messing with the... If I check... Yeah, you can actually work all of this. Just don't... Don't mess with those animals. Yeah. Okay, good. It's getting dark. It's about to rain again. I think it's about to rain. Okay, so things are going quite well now. Church is being constructed. 16 out of 20 planks in. Uh, 4 out of 5 logs. The stone should come in through as well. 
Uh, that will then make everyone real happy and we should be able to increase the number of families and level up to the next... Uh, next level. Right, okay, good. Five logs are now in. So the ox should now start bringing logs to these. Let's set this to high, then that to medium. This is still very high. Okay, construction priorities. I probably didn't need to build a trading post so early. Look at our rinky-dink village. We don't really need a trading post in this sort of location, but sure. I'd like to be able to um, create a surplus of something. Uh, we have, actually have a lot of timber. Like, the logging camp does some good job. If I go here and check trade... Can we trade logs? Probably not, right? A trading cart can't carry logs away. Oh, our town's starting to sound rather bustling, the ambient voices. I didn't realize they would be that loud. There is an audio slider for that, though. There is ambient voice lines. I'm gonna drop you all down. So it's more of a murmur in the background. I think it's because there's there's so many stalls now. There's three. Three stalls. Look at them go. <laughs> a new family has moved in. Yeah, I want it to be loud when I zoom in, but quiet when I move uh, zoom back out. We've got a new family. So I could assign someone to the trading post. And maybe I could establish a trade route for planks let's establish that trade route unlocked planks so I want desired surplus locked because trade rule is set to no trade um, trade rule is set to no trade okay I'm trying to understand how this works so desired surplus is set to five. Trade rule is set to no trade. So where is the trade rule? Is it actually in here? Uh, advanced? No. Trade. Livestock? No. We don't ha own any horses. Running out of fuel. Uh oh. Um, let's. Get someone on the woodcutter's lodge again. I didn't realize that was so low. Let's get more woodcutters going. Uh, I don't suppose it's under policies. Some of these are still locked in early access. Strict fasting. Citizens skip every fifth meal. Wow. Wild animals on rich deposits breed twice as fast at the cost of 50% reduced yields from crops. Oh. So there's specializations going on there. How's the church? Planks in, stones starting to come in. This burgage plot has got a log as well. Okay. Because now we're we're actually fully booked here. We got we gotta get some extra houses in. So in terms of this trade, I'm not a hundred percent sure of exactly how this works. Advanced trade. So, people suffering from disease may stop working. Access to herbs might speed up their recovery while a varied diet increases resistance. Are people getting sick? Uh, this is always my downfall. So if I drop this to zero. No, that's still five. So, wait, this, this is logs, not planks. So... Do I need someone working in the storehouse? Let's uh, stop logging for a little bit. Come one, come all. Feast your eyes. Right Follow merchant. So this merchant is on the way. Look at this guy. This merchant's on the way. Where? Where is this? There. And we are here. I don't think it's coming this way. Unless it happens to turn right here. 
Oh, it's turning right. Okay. Merchant's on the way to my town. Who's that? Who's this? I don't know who this is. Is this a messenger of some kind? I'm not sure. Who are you? You're walking towards my village. But okay. We'll see what happens when the trader arrives. How's, uh, okay, fuel supply going back up. Happiness is at 61%. Wow. Okay. Market food variety plus four. Clothing market supply plus four. Homelessness is now just minus one. And we have plus three plus one from before. Okay, this desired surplus now says 10. We have 10 planks. Okay, locked because the trade rule is set to no trade. I don't know where the trade rule is. I don't want it on no trade. I want to trade. Is there something here? Surplus, stock, uh, treasury. Is there something on traveling merchants? Not finished yet. Okay. Is there something about trade? Surplus. Stock. Okay, I don't know how to trade. I've done this before in, in the demo, but I'm not- I can't remember. It was a while ago. And I, I just don't understand this locked because trade rule is set to no trade. And I, I don't see where the trade rule is. Right, that's, that's the problem. So I don't see how- Oh wait, it's right there! Oh, it's because it's gray on gray. Okay, export. There we go. Desired surplus. So this is how much current surplus, desired surplus. Okay, five. Okay, it's right there. Okay, look, my monitor is not the biggest monitor. But also, this is like a light gray on a pale, slightly darker medium gray. I didn't see that. Okay, yeah. Okay, I found it. I found it. Okay, there we go. So that should mean that um, planks should be brought over. Is that is that you bringing a plank? Is that a stack of planks into here, into the trading post? It should be stored in here. Yes. There we go. A plank. Very good. So desired surplus is five. So we're exporting for two coins each. So that'll get us a little bit of money. Oh, very good. How How's the church? All the resources are there. We're now just constructing it. Oh, it's coming along. Look at that. Griping peasants. Oh, look. It's actually got like... Are you putting it plank by plank? How, how detailed is this construction animation? Another beam coming up. Wow, is it really building it plank by plank? Because that's... Maybe it's like a few planks at a time? Look how... No, it's like one plank at a time. Wow, okay. <laughs> the construction of, of buildings is literally like one plank at a time. You can see the stone was put in already. That's sort of the foundation here. Look at that, that one's got a little window in it. Let's zoom right into the wood texture so you can see how detailed this texture is. I think that is quite as high resolution as, as you'd want it to be, right? Like this... <laughs> this is still actually pretty good resolution texture at that zoom level. Come on. And how, do, how does it like... Like you zoom all the way out here. Surely that's not the same model. Are there no LODs? There must be lots, otherwise this would lag out. So you can see like the the tree the tree shadows and the tree details do pop in and out. But besides the trees, I can't see the pop in. Wow, okay. So our trading post. Yep, there's four planks in there. Very nice. We are ready to trade. Where's where's the trader? Oh, they're here. They're here. We're gonna make our, our first our first dollar. 
follow the trader. We just made eight bucks? What was that? Or is the trader just arriving now? They're actually walking into there. Okay. Hello, welcome. Welcome to the trade house. Let me see what's... Okay. Alright, so I think... Did we sell anything? I, he I heard a coin sound. Oh, there it is. Yeah, regional wealth. Oh, okay. I was looking at the wrong thing. I was looking at treasury. We do actually have regional wealth. There we go. We made some money. Okay. Very nice. The church is also almost done. The Those houses are also ready to be built. Okay, so approval rating is going up. Total population 21 with seven families. We we can't get more p families in yet because we need these houses built. But this church is almost done? Don't pin that. The church is almost done. That's going to be high. That's going to be medium. Yeah, we'll get those two houses down real quick once the church is done. I just really want the church done because that'll let us level up the, the village as well. So besides that, um, are we producing a surplus of anything else? We've got 36 of meat. Wow. Uh, 24 firewood. 22 leather. Is there a trade route for ma yeah, materials? Oh, we can sell hides? Route required. Oh, it's a major trade. Okay, so to establish a trade route, we need 70 two regional wealth. So we need to make up to 72 regional wealth if we even want to open that trade route. Some of these trade routes are much cheaper. Four for a firewood one. Uh, yeah, we don't really need... Uh, I don't know whether it's worth getting all these going. Because we tend to... We're, we're struggling on firewood. Is there something else we could sell? Food? How about meat? Anyone want to buy meat? Yeah, 24 to establish that trade route. Food for 8 months? 36 meat? I feel like we might run out of meat if I start selling it. That that sounds like a greedy move, right? Let's sell our only food source. That'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't sound safe to do. Okay, the storehouse. I'm gonna remove the worker from the storehouse. Because that will speed up construction of things as well. We might be able to get these burgage plots built as well. Let's speed up the game. So everything seems to be going quite well. I'm a little bit wary of these uh, brigands over there. This is a nice place to build though. But I think... Ooh, the wooden church is done. Oh, fantastic. Do I need to assign a worker here? I think so. Let's assign someone to the wooden church so that we actually have a worker. Look at this church. The church is amazing. Give it a lick. It tastes just like raisins. Okay, anyway. Church level. Okay, so according to this, I can now upgrade to level 2. Unlocks new extensions, including artisans' workshops. Residential requirements will increase. Okay, yeah. So, water access, church level, fuel, stall supply, food stall supply. We can now upgrade. So, I should upgrade the ones, like, close to everything. So, let's upgrade this one. And upgrade this one. We're going to upgrade two of them. And they both cost four logs each to upgrade. But we only need two. To actually, like level up. We've got the two extra plots down here as well. So hopefully a couple more people move in because church bell sound. Oh, you get to change it? A really tinny. <laughs> let's go let's go for a classic bong. I think that's that's a good idea, right? Okay, so What's this? Requirements not met. Cause a loss of approval. Would it be... Finest hides in all the 
fuel supply, I think. Yeah, it's okay, it's okay. Church level plus two, yeah, the, the, just having the church access keeps a bunch of people happy. Come one, come all. all right, so, this is... not the marketplace. Let's get this to very high, not to high. Resource stolen by the nearby bandits. Is that firewood? I think it was firewood. What, what's firewood under here? Yeah, they, they stole some firewood. Okay, not the worst thing. We can keep that going. Uh, now keep in mind also, all of these industry buildings have slots for like three, two or three people. We could double or triple a lot of our production if we just had the people. Like even the, the food supply. Then again, if I over hunt, I might like wipe out this wild animals. I think it's going to be important to... I'd love to forage these berries, but it's such a long ways away that if we did that, I, I would need a surplus family just dedicated to doing that, right? We just made 20 coins. Come on, come on. Feast your eyes on our From this guy? You're just carrying it? Alright, so trade is going. Very nice. Okay, how's this going? This should be able to upgrade now. Very good. Yes. So, burgage plots level 1 or higher. Burgage plots level 2 or higher. We just need two of them, right. Oh, look at this. This roof tiling. It shines because it's wet, because it's raining. Very nice. Okay, so that... Yep, we got one. Now you want tavern supply? More clothes? More food? Oh, you want everything, don't you? A tavern? Oh. Well, let's just upgrade this next house first. Well, generally, approval rating is pretty good. Church level plus four. I, I think church access is just sort of easy. That's why it's so expensive to build the church. It, it just makes everyone happy and then really gets things going. You'll not find else. Okay, so we currently have... 7, 8, 9. How many houses do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7... We have 8 houses. Do we have a... Uh, did someone move into the house already? No, not yet. The requirement, requirement's not met to upgrade the house. Upgrading these houses does feel a bit like Anno, but the requirements are much more intensive, I think. You know, I, I am wondering, what happens if I just send my militia over to just attack them? Uh, I mean, to do things, we, we could, like, claim territory. A bandit camp was sighted. Where? Is this in our territory? No. It's over there. A new bandit camp has appeared. Uh, okay. So to claim territory, we need influence. And to get all that stuff, we need to level up our, our things. So we're just waiting on this and once that's done we should level up and then i think yeah it could begin from raising the settlement level enacting a policy conquering bandit camps and upgrading your churches or manor upgrading your churches upgrade to a small stone church oh wow new mercenary company available it's a if i check mercenary companies this is Oh, treasury costs, not regional wealth. This is out of my own pocket. Yeah, it's Battle Brothers. Brotherhood of Forest, Brigands for Hire. Yeah. It actually says where they arrive. Okay. Like, as the families increase, we do get more militia recruits. Currently, our soldiers are up to 14. We could support 20. Ooh, 15. A new family just moved in. Very nice. Into this. Alright. 
So if that's now the case, what's not working? Oh, the logging camp. Settlement increased. New development point. So we do... Oh, we can actually go into, like, pelt extraction. Hunters also collect hides from traps. Doubles the amount of meat harvested by hunters and butchers. F doubles the amount of meat harvested by hunters. That's actually so good. Do I want anything else right now? Establishing a new trade route always costs a maximum of 25 regional wealth. That's... Ooh, that's also a good one. A permanent market stall which provides passive income of firewood as long as the region has enough regional wealth. Region does not pay the transport fee. Food cart just brings in bread. Oh, so this, this just allows us to pay money to just constantly buy firewood or bread without even having to wait for... Uh, just a constant bread trade might be nice. Workers collect honey. Every region can sustain up to two apiaries by default. Placing more will not increase the yields. I could get honey. But this would just double our meat amount. Doubles the amount of meat harvested by hunters. Right, that's just that's just good, right? Let's get that. Don't suppose we have no, we don't have access to all of this. Okay. If we wanted to level up again, we would need Oh, just more, three more at level two, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'd need to build like two more. So let's do construction. Let's do burgage plot. Uh, can I fit two houses here? Yeah, let's build two more there. And if I wanted to upgrade, I needed how many? Three more? Upgrade that one. Upgrade that one. And upgrade that one. Okay. So, actually, if we build those two and then upgrade those... We'll just level up again. Oh wait, no. Um, we might need to build even more plots, I think. Right, so... It says... Um, actually, no, I think we just have to wait until they finish, and then I'll, we'll see how many we have. Because it's level 1 or higher, so we just need a total of 10 houses, right? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. We should have 11? Yeah, 9 plus 2. It says right there on the UI. I, I just need to read things. Okay, so all of that's going really nicely. Um, it is September, so we're going into winter. So in terms of meat production... Food is fine, but we definitely need more. How many logs? Eight. We have eight surplus. We're still producing planks, which we sell for money. We actually have 91 regional wealth. It's actually going well. Um, storehouse and granary don't have any workers. I, I want another person on the woodcutter's lodge. Our wild animals is actually, like, replenishing one, back to full. So I don't think we need to... Yeah, I just need more... Um, firewood right now. Him? Never. He does not know how to cook oh, we need to transport so many logs. I mean, you can see why getting another ox would be nice. Like, does it help to have people work? Order another ox. Oh, it only costs 20. Let's order another ox. 
Can we have two oxes? Twen 20 is very good. Upgrade to a small stable. Expand stable space by one. Disconnected from the road network. Oh, it's not actually connected to the road road? Like, does this help? Connected to the road network. All right. Stable space one out of one. So I, I ordered another ox. I don't know if that means... I should probably just upgrade this, right? It's just two planks. We got... I should have done this a long time ago. It's taking forever. Not enough stable space. Yeah, build more hitching posts or upgrade it. Yeah, Let, let's upgrade this ASAP. We should have plenty. Yeah, there's five planks right there. Because it's just going to help bring things around. So in terms of all this construction, I am going to take the family off the logging camp. So we got two unassigned families. Oh, look at this small stable. So this now can ho house two oxes. Stable space, two out of two. So livestock. Fritz? Oh, we got, we got a new... You can rename them? New family moved in. Perfect. So with the new family, I want to add to the Woodcutter's Lodge. Got a new house. Perfect. We just made some money. Very nice. Back up to 82 regional wealth. Public order is 90%, governs the chance of crime occurring as well as citizens permanently turning to banditry. I see. Uh, oh, there's no negative approval effects right now. Market food variety is plus 5, church plus 2, clothing market supply plus 4. Okay, that's really nice. We've got 27 people. These two houses are down. So now we, we just gotta wait for these to upgrade. Oh, things go much faster when you actually know what you're doing. Here's one ox. That is Linhart, and this is Fritz. Is this currently being ordered? Where are you? You're there? Oh, you have to go all the way down there, and then up to here. I just realized I'm being very silly about this. We just need a road. To connect up to here. And then traders coming from this side can just walk into our town from this side. Currently they're walking all the way down there to come all the way back up here. <laughs> this... we need to cut through. We needed a cut through road. Okay. Uh, there's all of these little things that you wish you, you knew like earlier on. Okay. Uh, so that's being upgraded. That needs more resources. Okay, so we now have... So we've increased the number of woodcutters. I'm gonna have another family work on woodcutting because that's really kind of a limiting factor right now. Food supply is fine and I'm assuming hunting can continue through winter. Like, wood, firewood collection can continue through winter. So, if I check my military... 18? Okay. If we get two more families, we'll, we'll actually, like, use up all of our weapons. And then I might want to just charge at the nearby bandits just to see what happens. Like, how many bandits are we looking at here? It's like 15 people? 20 people? You think we can kill these people? I mean, they look like they're kind of equipped. They got like hammers and shields. Like we might be able to kill them, but we might take some losses. What happens when a family loses the man of the house? Like what, what happens there? 
Okay, so Burgage plots. Uh, okay, yeah. Upgrading to level 2 does count for level 1 as well. So we have two more on the way. That's level 2. Oh, this is level 2. This is level 2. Wait, how many do we have? Oh, that's under... Oh, yeah. These two are still under construction. Right, waiting on the planks. Where is our new ox? Fritz, where are you? Still on the way? Ah, oh, can't oxes run? <laughs> They've only made it there. <laughs> all right, all right. We're just gonna have to wait for that to show up. I don't know why our fuel is so low. We have so many people... Like, they have unlimited disconnected from the road network. Does that... Does that help? The road can't even go, really go down that way. Let's build a road there. I've built it kind of sillily. Is it just because it's getting into the colder months? Seasonal resources are gone, firewood consumption doubled, and lack of firewood might cause freezing. Sheep shearing forbidden. Yeah, that makes sense. You don't shear sheep in the winter. Okay, that's coming along. So, yeah, we should actually be okay. There's 11 living spaces. So we have five level two families. Nine level one families? That that math doesn't work out. I think the five overlaps with the nine, and then it's thrown off a little bit because the two are still under construction. Wait, where's Fritz? Linhart's here. What happened to the ox we ordered? That's a trader. Transporting planks. What happened to the ox? It says two out of two. I have to assume maybe that's just a UI bug. But I don't see the new ox on the road. Where'd it go? Oh, that was a puddle. The ox has disappeared. Well, hopefully it shows up at some point. Didn't, like... Okay, well, we got 10 level 1 houses, so we just need to finish constructing that. Like, what happens when I order another ox? I mean, this is still early access, so I assume there are still bugs, but I think I've just... Maybe I've lost two oxes there. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Ox may or may not appear, but I should have done that way earlier anyway. Wait, there's Fritz. Fritz is right here. Fritz is right here. We, we've got Fritz. It's just not showing up in, in the UI. We do have Fritz. Which means I just ordered uh, another thing, so I probably should... Uh, what would we be under? Where's the hitching post? Uh, logistics? Hitching post. It just costs one log. Yeah, we'll just have another hitching post. Then we'll have three ox oxen, and then we can really get things moving. So there's like no one working at this stable. 
That might help things along. Okay, but we upgrade this one house, and then we should just level up. Yeah, not enough stable space, don't worry. We, we've got something coming. Let's focus on this burgage plot, though, because that means we can level up again. To... Well, we're currently medium village. So I set this to very high. This should be set to high. Settlement level increased. We are now a large village, which is asking for Burgage Plots level three. So I don't think there's any level three tech that we can get to right now. But what can I get? Pelt extractions, doubles the capacity of berries. Apiary is sort of attracting me. Or you could get orchardry going, uh, but that takes a long time. Making trade routes cheaper, like a maximum price, or this foreign suppliers. You know, beekeeping honey, that could just be really nice to have. Let's unlock beekeeping. Which means we can produce... would it be an industry? No. Farming? I know I saw it before. Gathering. The apiary. Workers collect honey. Could you just build the little thing? Well, traditionally, apiaries are set up, like, at the church, right? Let's... It says we can build two? Let's do that. This costs some planks. Okay. So, I think that's a pretty good look at this, but there's one more thing we want to do. A new family just moved in, which means we can put someone on logging camp there. Uh, we seem to have been properly getting uh, fire back in. Now, what I want to do is I want to go to army. I want to rally. Come on. We're rallying our soldiers. I wonder if I can just walk over. Get into formation. Everyone group up. These bandits have been messing with us. Can I just walk on over? Can I ambush them from the trees? So I want to be like here. Yeah, just hang out here in the forest. Right there. Let's see what happens. Can we just, okay. Push forward at full force. Stand their ground. Give ground. I think balance makes the most sense. Like, we have about as many people as they have people, so... <laughs> I don't know how this is gonna go, but... Military is an important thing here. Are they mobilizing? Oh, we're kind of equal. They're mobilizing. Is it wise to fight in the forest? So we've got 20, they've got 16. Oh, look at this. Nice. The, the tree's clear when you mouse over the enemy, so you can see them. Now, this is, this is quite obstructed for our view. So they're walking right towards us. Do we charge at them, or do we wait for them to come to us? What's the... Oh, we're preparing to fight. There they are. Here we are. Oh, okay, they're charging at us. 
Oh, look at that screen shake. Our first battle in Mana Lords. Come on, kill him. We outnumber them a little bit. How do you even tell who's who? We don't have any uniforms. <laughs> How do we tell what's what's going on? We've got fatigue, effectiveness, cohesion, experience, army power balance. Surrounded by trees is minus 10, but I assume that's that affects them as well. So we outnumber them a little bit, which does count for quite a bit. 20 to 14 is huge. Oh, 20 to 13. First blood. I'm trying to find the dead person. Is there? Oh, there they are, down there. Ooh, 20 to 11. 20 to 10, we're now 2 to 1. This is going way better than I thought it would. I thought everyone was gonna die. Oh, that, that one just stabbed the one on the ground. Okay, they retreated. Can we just go wipe them out? Go claim the bandit camp. You've stolen your last firewood. <laughs> they're out here and they're stealing like our firewood. Please, we're freezing. Oh, because we told them to attack, they're actually running. Yeah, go, go get them. I don't even know where the rest of them ran to. But can we trash this bandit camp? A new message. When searching through the enemy belongings, you find a stash of goods. They could be sent to your people who surely need them, though it's your... Send resources to the nearest town. This belongs to my treasury now. Hmm. Well, I don't have any treasury. This belongs to my treasury now. Oh, we've got 162 and we got 320 influence from that. Does that mean I have influence to... Can I claim this territory? I need a thousand. Oh, okay. So clearing the bandit camp actually got us quite a bit. Now you all... Um, can't disband outside of home region. Okay, everyone come back into the home region. So we got rid of the bandits, got ourselves a nice bit of personal treasury, got ourselves a good chunk of influence, and no one died. I don't even know where the, the bandits that retreated went to. Alright, very good. So we're gonna bring our people back home. And it's going into winter soon, which is next month. But we've got five months worth of food and fuel, so that's all good. Um, things probably ground to a halt a little bit back home because... 20 of our people were, were out here killing other people, but sure. Come on back, come on back. Alright. Ah, oh. all right. Well, so far, Mana Lords seems to have a lot going for it. This is still clearly early access. There's a lot of things which are locked or not quite ready yet. And there's a couple UI bugs. Okay, you're back in here. So see, I can't disband because I think I have to reselect. There we go. It's like there's things like that where... The UI didn't update as they entered our territory. I had to deselect and select again. Um, or like our our ox. We've got Albrecht. Look at this. So Albrecht is here. But see, the, the livestock's not showing on our livestock things. Linhart is still there, but the other... Albrecht and... I forgot the name of the other one. Lintz or whatever isn't here. But we've, we can level up our village. There's techs and stuff to to unlock. Military does feel like it works appropriately. Here's our soldiers returning from the battle. Victorious. The game looks great visually. like And optimization and performance-wise, I cannot complain. I mean, 
I've got a I've got a chunky computer, but um, this is this is running on max settings and it looks great. Look at the puddles in the water; it's really good. We can also still just like jump on down and walk through our village. Oh, look, we've got the the apiaries are done. I assume they require people to work. Oh, four can work at one. Oh, wow. Okay. So we could get honey. Trade works. So yeah, this feels like a very solid start to early access. A lot to enjoy right now. But what do you think? Do you think you're going to jump in right now? Or are you going to wait uh, for more? This is basically... The, the city building stuff is sort of somewhat more fleshed out from the demo last year. But the addition of military and the, the politics and claiming of territory does allow you to have a full game. It's just some of the content is not quite ready yet. I mean, see even the map updates with this. Can we see like our rival's village or anything? Can we, can we like look at what they're doing? I don't see anything on their side, but I don't know if... It's because we need to, uh, like, there's a, maybe there's a fog of war on enemy territory, so we can't just see what they're doing, which would make sense, you know? Okay, but yeah. Clearing the forest, very nice, very obvious what we're doing here. That is Mana Lords at the start of Early Access. This is a slightly early look just before the Early Access launch, so this is essentially Early Access build at the start. Oh, this is a nice angle. Just stare at our... Ooh, I know. Uh, control C. Cinematic view. So we can, like, see our village through the treetops like that. Very nice. Uh, this is Mana Lords. What do you think? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you have any questions, do just ask. I will look into it and try and answer it before you buy into early access. We can, we can test. We can see. Um, so if you have any questions, just let me know and I'll get back to you. Anyway, that's going to be it for now. Thank you all so much for joining. I hope you enjoyed this look at this city-building medieval strategy game. Probably one of the most Im uh, anticipated strategy games of 2024. And for some, uh, for many, I think, the most anticipated strategy game. So does it live up to the hype? My name's been Zach. I'll see you in the next video.